Hello and welcome to this presentation about migrating a Spring Boot application into Quarkus. This is the way, as uh, our friend Mando would say. So let's let's start. Well, this is the contents of the presentation. So first, I will introduce myself. Uh, what can you expect about this presentation? And a bit of introduction of what it is, Quarkus. Why I decided to do this migration. And the migration steps, obviously. And also a performance comparative that you need to take into, well, a bit of consideration. So it's simply few numbers without going super uh, deep into getting them. So just simply like a simple view of the different results. And in the end, a list of references that probably can help you if you want to follow this path. So I'm Jonathan. I'm from Barcelona in Spain. And well, recently I was nominated as Java champion. And also I'm co-leader of the Barcelona Java user group and co-founder of JVC and Conf, a conference that we host here in Barcelona and we were expecting to host the sixth edition this past 2020. Also, I work as a software engineer at Red Hat. Well, in the left, you have, apart from a beautiful painting on my face, you have my Twitter handle, my email, my blog, where you will find articles for presentations like this one, and also uh, articles for other topics like test containers or, well, other technical stuff that you can probably find interesting. Also, you can find here the URL for my GitHub repositories. So what I'm going to show here with this presentation is not a magistral lecture of anything. So I'm not going to teach you anything. I'm only going to so show you my experience. So this is an opinionated way of doing this migration. And as a result, this is not the way as Mando would say. I hope that you will find your way to do the migration or similar migrations. The different versions of the source and target are for one side 225 on Spring Boot and the other side 170 for Quarkus. I did this presentation time ago um, sorry, this migration time ago. Um, and well, Quarkus, as they are going super fast, they, they already are in 1.11. So let's start with the Quarkus brief description of what it is. And here you will find in this presentation some um, screenshots of games, retro games from 80s and 90s. Um, well, it, it it brings me to, to the past, to, to, be, to very happy uh, ages. Okay, what is Quarkus? So Quarkus is a Kubernetes native stack. You can, find, you can use it with Java and other flavors, but it's mainly thought as something very friendly to Kubernetes, something um, compatible with GraalVM compilation and something that can run on OpenJDK. And adding to that, it's also something that doesn't try to reinvent the wheel. So it will use the same, the same libraries, standard libraries that you have been using in the past. So they have created extensions, optimized versions of those libraries that you can use with Quarkus, therefore compile to native mode. So you don't have to learn new tricks. 
So about the facts of Quarkus, well, first is super fast, especially going to native. Second is super light. Well, it consumes way less memory. And using these two facts, then you can think on going to other environments, so other infrastructures, just saying lambdas, serverless, fast. So moving your microservices to serverless can also imply cost reduction. Also, it is focused on easy to code, so you don't have to learn lots of things to start using Quarkus. You also, it is also open source. So this is very important. You will find the code over there and it's, you can also contribute to it. That's more important. And also it has fast paced releases. So they are, mm, they are mm, creating new releases every now and then. So every week, every two weeks, you have a, a new version. And six, they have lots of extensions that they integrate to. So they have 150 extensions that they can integrate. So Kafka, Camel, Kickclock, Spring, Flyway, Hibernate, up to 150. So there are lots of libraries that probably you are using some of them. Therefore, you don't need to modify your code. Just simply stay where you are, but with Quarkus. About the Quarkus evolution, well, it started with on, on late uh, late December on 2018, and several releases after, or more or less, as we say. So it's 2019, 2020, one month, one month, well, more or less, two years and a bit more. Um, we are in release 1.11. So about Quarkus performance, there are like main two things. Memory. So we are going from traditional cloud native stack. You can imagine what it is. Um, that it will consume in a certain project around 140 megabytes of memory. So if we go to Quarkus doing the same, we will reduce to half of that. But if we go to native, that doesn't imply touching our code at all. So we are using the same code that we used to run on JVM, simply adding a profile on the Maven build, and then we will have it on native. So doing just that simple trick, we will have one tenth of memory. So we can increase a lot the density of our cluster where we have one application, now we can have 10. Also with uh, response time. So the first response of the application that is also important when you have high scalability um, in order to start new pods, new machines, um, depending on the demand. So it is important that, well, if you need a machine now, you cannot wait four seconds. So also that's important when you have a lot of variability on, on your pod running. It is going from four seconds to 16 milliseconds. So there are two different orders of magnitude. So this, uh, also this improvement is super high. So also uh, in speed, we are finding a lot of benefit. So in order to give you a context of what it is the project Quarkus, well, you can only taking one week, you can see here the lot of movement. So pull requests created, um, merged, issues closed, new issues. So there's a lot of movement in the project. And also, well, they came from being a few people, and now the project has more than 400 contributors and around 7, 
thousand of stars in GitHub. And as you can see, well, they released the 1.11 version five days ago. So there's, there's quite a lot of movement behind this project. So let's focus on the migration. And especially this screen is, uh, well, it, it brings nice memories because I didn't move from stage one in this game. Ghost and Goblins. So it was nice for me to create this screen putting stage two. It's like, well, what I didn't succeed on the game, I fake it on the presentation. <laughs> That's nice. Okay, so why I decided to try this migration? Just because, well, my experience with the Spring Boot was that it was easy to develop uh, applications using CDI, using REST, using um, logging, you, know, you name it. Several um, libraries that Spring makes it easier to develop with. But it also came with a problem, at least for me. It had long startup times. So every time you start the application, well, it takes a lot. And also this affects the tests. So uh, passing all the tests will take ages. Another negative point was that it was taking a lot of memory. So I don't know, uh, that was also a, a drawback on, on the result of using a spring. And too many things were happening under the hood on runtime. So you were not expecting to find some things running and they were there. So I heard about Quarkus and they said, okay, it is easy to develop applications. Fine. It is fast. Oh, nice. I'm interested on. It's lightweight. Okay. So when we go to production, this is something that we are uh, very concerned about. And it also is GraalVM compatible. So you will be able to explore other options that at the moment uh, only going to Python or uh, Node.js scripts was possible. So going lambdas, serverless, fast, you name it. So, okay, let's start doing this migration and feel the pain. So I chose this Spring Boot uh, application called Pet Clinic REST that it came with Spring Data, Web, Security, Documentation, Actuators, Micrometer, CDI, aspect oriented and catch more or less the things that were in at most of the applications using a spring except for aspect oriented probably so well which is the the correspondent uh, library on quarkus is well panach hibernate panach jax rs quarkus security on open api small right health micro profile metrics cdi and Quarkus Catch that it is using caffeine. We don't have uh, aspect oriented on Quarkus. Just because most of the work is done on build time, not on running time. That's why Quarkus can create applications that are running faster on boot time. Just because it does a lot of work on build time and not on run time. So uh, I didn't migrate the three flavors of the persistence. So Spring JDBC and Spring Data JPA. So I used only JPA. And I didn't migrate also JMX just because it was not clear if it was uh, officially uh, supported by GraalVM. So I didn't want to explore that. So let's focus on the migration steps. Going or flying with the help of Afterburner. So on CDI, so it's a matter of replacing auto-wired by inject annotation. And then your bins with uh, application scope. So changing from uh, component or service to application scope. You will have auto-injection on constructors. You will be lazy by default. So those are very important things and interesting for uh, boot time, especially. And also we have the ability to annotate the bins or the programmatic bins that uh, we create um, to be instantiated, instantiated depending on the 
different factors. So probably, uh, so it can depend on the profile that you're using or even a config property uh, depending on its value. So it's a very interesting feature too. About the JPA repositories, well, it was only a matter of moving from application, uh, sorry, um, to implementing Panache repository base. In this case, it's Panache repository base just because um, the default class for identities in the entities is long for Panache and in uh, Spring was using integer. So in, in order to not change everything, just simply move to base instead of Panache repository and that's it. And you will have all the usual methods for managing the entities. But we don't have query DSL methods. So those fine by name and age, blah, 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 you will not have it. But you can annotate your methods with the query to obtain the same data. Probably I would prefer that way because uh, with query, query DSL methods for simple queries can be worth it, but for more complex queries, probably it can be a bit, a bit messy. I don't know. About Spring REST, well, it's a matter of moving to JAX RS. So it was more or less a string replace. So replacing one annotation by another, but except for the request mapping, because in that annotation you have the three elements and you need to break it down into the different annotations for JAXRS. But it was very easy. Regarding the Springs, uh, so the security, well, in Spring REST, we have this pre-authorized and an expression language to define which are the roles that can uh, access that method. But in Quarkus, we only have these roles allowed that accepts uh, a list. So, well, it's a difference, but in this specific project, it was not a problem. Also, this spring secu this, uh, the security was persisted in a database. And to do that uh, in a transparent form, um, well, with Quarkus, we use Elitron Security JDBC and it will take care of all of this. Just simply um, put these properties in the properties file to configure the behavior of Elitron and that's it. And well, as I said before, the only drawback is that Quarkus doesn't have an expression language for uh, roles, but that was the only, the only thing. About the cross origin, well, it's a matter of adding these two properties in the properties file and you, you will have a course uh, enabled. The only drawback is that for a spring, you can have cores at the controller level, but for uh, Quarkus, I didn't find the way to do this at controller level, so it was configured uh, globally. Regarding metrics, well, it's a matter of adding a small write metrics, and then you will have well, the usual metrics that you have in this output. The only difference is that a spring uses micrometer notation and this would use the microprofile notation that are not exactly the same. But then there's a, a toggle in the properties that you can enable in order to create the compatibility layer. So you will have the naming convention for a micrometer. Also, you can even go and use micrometer extension and then you don't have even to touch your code if you want to have custom metrics uh, with the micrometer uh, code. With validation, well, it's a matter of adding, of moving from Spring validation to Hibernate validator and, well, and going to controller advice to exception mapper. More or less, the, se the code is very similar, but, well, you need to, to, touch, to touch it a bit and, and that's it. It, it, al it also uh, is uh, relying on uh, the standard annotations for checking the, the validation and the constraints on the pojos. Regarding Swagger, well, it's a matter of adding the extension open API and then adding a class extending application and then adding this uh, annotation open API definition where you will put all your uh, configuration of your uh, API in these annotations and, and that's it. 
the only drawback that I found is with uh, Spring, you can specify which are the paths that you want to annotate to get the information for the Swagger. But with Quarkus, I didn't I didn't find a way to do this. So all the all the resources were added into the Swagger definition. Regarding AOP, that in this uh, Spring project was used to get metrics for all the methods in the repository. Um, with Quarkus, well, it would be a matter of adding annotations for all the custom methods that you we want to have metrics, or adding this simple property in the properties file, and then we will have all the metrics from Hibernate into the metrics output. With local caching, well, it's a matter of adding catch extension and then use the catch result annotation. It's very similar to the spring one, but well, changes a bit. And then uh, specify the behavior on on the properties, specifying well the initial capacity or maximum size for each catch in, in those properties. Regarding testing, well, we are going from mock MVC to rest assured. Bad news, you need to change completely your code. But I would say that I would prefer the rest assured flavor, but it's a matter of taste. So also, there is a drawback that I didn't find a way to simulate roles in testing. With a Spring, you can inject roles, but with Quarkus, I didn't find a way to do this. So it was a matter of creating a user, assigning it to a, to a role, and then inject a user uh, as the caller to a, to a method, and then check if, if the security is working. Regarding uh, test resources, so on test, you are supposed to not use the final production uh, database. I would recommend that you effectively do it. But in this case, it was using a H2 in memory database. So to do that, it's a matter of adding this H2 database test resource with the Quarkus test resource. I would prefer the way to use test containers where you can use the real database that you are going to use in production, relying on, on containers. Uh, but that's another story. With mocking, well, a matter of injecting beans, uh, it's a matter of adding the dependency, Quarkus unit 5 mockito, and inject mock is the annotation, and you will have your, your bean injected. So we've reached a point where I say, forget everything. There's an easier path to do this migration that it is to use a Spring Quarkus extensions. So don't touch your code if you are using a Spring Web. Quarkus will do its magic on build time using your current code. The same with the Spring Dependence Injection. Don't touch your code and Quarkus will do its magic. There are certain things that the extension doesn't cover, especially corner cases, that you need to check. But if that's not the case, then you're done. Simply use the extension and don't touch the code. The same with the, with the Spring Data JPA. Uh, even now we, we can we can use query DSL methods, so that's that's perfect. If you want to stay on the Spring side, um, but on Quarkus side on compilation, and especially if you have already a lot of work done on Spring, you need to you don't need to touch your code. And with the Spring Security, is exactly the same. And even in this case, we, we have expression language for uh, the roles uh, security. And I reached the point where I had two different applications, or in this case, three different applications. One, Spring, the Spring one, the Quarkus one running on JVM, and the Quarkus one uh, running as a native artifact. So on build time, we don't gain anything positive. But I'm not concerned on build time. I'm concerned on boot on running time. So on 
the boot time with the spring boot we are going from seven seconds we move to two seconds and a half on Quarkus JVM but then we move down 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 to less than half a second on Quarkus native so that's super impressive seven seconds half a second and also on memory consumption we are going from 700 megabytes to 200 megabytes and 21 megabytes so this is a clear idea that we can move to other environments especially serverless because we are using less than half a second and 21 megabytes with exactly the same code that we have for Quarkus JVM just simply enable enabling one profile on the uh, compilation so now I will show you some references that can help you to explore this uh, new path uh, if you want to improve your application and try to move to um, serverless uh, environments where you will only pay for the time that your application is providing value so not paying for your application waiting so the you will have here the links to the quark to the github repositories the original one and the migrated one the quarkus website quarkus twitter handle the developers red hat um, link where you will find lots of resources tutorials and documentation about quarkus and also the quarkus mailing list where you will you can uh, send uh, questions and doubts to the to the Quarkus team about the tutorials where you will find several Katacoda tutorials in that the developer Red Hat those are tutorials that are running on the cloud uh, they are provisioning an IDE uh, OpenShift web console and the tutorial steps so it's perfect to, to learn and not mess with your uh, machine and it's very convenient and very and very easy and you can also select different topics about learning also the cheat sheet from alex soto that is providing for each uh, version with all the changes that are have been published if you want to start coding well co code.quarkus.io where you will uh, select the different libraries that you want to include in your application and then it will provide it will generate a, a zip skeleton file and that you can start from also another tool that can help you to migrate applications uh, i work in that team and it's a migration toolkit for applications or mta or the upstream project windup so this is a static analysis application that will analyze uh, your application and it will provide which are the things that you need to modify in order to move from source to target it covers several migration paths from uh, monolith to cloud from web sphere to eap from oracle jdk to open jdk and also uh, from spring boot to quarkus so it will cover dependent in injection integration metric jpi and several so here you can see a uh, uh, a screenshot of the application with a number of incidents found incidents uh, grouped by category and uh, and size on story points also you will find the different files that are creating those issues and in each file you will see which are the lines that are being uh, that have have to be modified in order to uh, move to the target also there are several plugins that you can use on your IDE, VS Code, Eclipse Che, so to directly analyze the source code of your application. Here are uh, use cases for, from big companies that already have done this migration from Spring Boot to Quarkus, especially the Vodafone one, uh, that I totally recommend that you take a look of, of their path. So this has been everything. I hope you have enjoyed. Thank you for uh, being patient. 
And if you have any doubts, any, well, you need help to migrate your application, don't hesitate to contact me at uh, Twitter, at my email, my blog, or my GitHub uh, repositories. Thank you very much and hope to see you again in another presentation. Bye.